and welcome to the Knock On Podcast, brought to you by Zero Tackle. And Dan, another incredible week of rugby league has gone past, where you and I have been absolutely thrilled with the Sharks being on top of the competition. But outside of that, outside of the bubble of Cronulla, things are going down. What's happening? Talk to me. Well, what's going down? This has been a busy, busy week. Now, we're going to touch on a few things we mentioned on Outlaws, uh, because there's been some, some developments, which is always fun, which is why we do... Two shows a week, second being right here on Zero Tackle. And number one, of course, is the big story. The David Fafita saga continues. Last time we spoke, he was headed to Penrith. Since then, about 10 other clubs have gone, wait a minute, we could use a player of David Fafita's quality. Talk to me. Um, I think the obvious ones that need to chase him were the Roosters, the Panthers, the, the Dragons, and the Raiders. Um... I think it's very, very telling that stories have already come out that he doesn't want to meet with the Dragons. Um, And it's narrowed down to the Roosters and the Panthers. Apparently, he's all the conversation and groundwork that Ricky Stewart has done with him meant nothing. Um, He's two of the facilities. But obviously, these clubs, you know, you you can speak with the Dragons, you can speak with the Raiders. Hell, you could speak with Manly. But the minute the Roosters and Panthers come knocking at your door... um, you kind of you shut all that noise out at the moment. I would be if I if I'm for feeder. You got 24 hours now essentially because you've got to make your decision before the kickoff on Thursday night. I'd be taking my time tonight with my partner. She plays for the Gold Coast Titans, and saying what is the best option for us moving forward? What is the best best option for me? What's the best option for you? How are we going to get you back down here? Do you want to stay on the Gold Coast? I know your season's only. 10 weeks long, um, you know, what does that mean for us there? I, if I'm for Fida, and I said this to you just before we recorded, I'm signing with Penrith. I'm signing, I'm taking that deal with Penrith. Uh, rumours are there is a fourth year option in the table for Penrith. It's a bit more money at the Panthers as well. Um, but if he goes to Penrith, honestly, becomes the best back row in the world. Arguably the best back row we've seen. We've seen what Penrith have done with Kili- Viliami Kikau, how they've turned Scott Sorensen from Park Football Premiership captain for, for Newtown into an international. They're somehow forging a rep career out of Liam Martin. Imagine what they could do with Dave Fafita. At the same time, you've got the Roosters who have got all the money, but I, if I'm looking at the two squads and how they're built, there are two players at Penrith that stand out head and shoulders over what there is at the Roosters, and that's Nathan Cleary, and that's Dylan Edwards, and those guys aren't going anywhere in the next three to four years, whereas Tedesco's gone, Luke Cleary's going, Sam Walker's in and out of first grade. Brandon, Brandon's, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, leaning with, I'm, I'm leaning with Penrith. I, and I hope he goes to Penrith. I really do hope he goes to Penrith. That'll be frightening. I can't see why he doesn't end up at Penrith. I'm a little bit... So... The Dragons came in and thought, we can offer him more money than anyone. That was the only chance they had, let's be honest. Fafida is, for mine, the best back row in the competition when he wants to be. He's not the most... You can't accuse him of being overly consistent. He's got games where he can blow anyone off the park. How he hasn't played every single Origin game that he's been eligible for says a lot about his attitude. Or injuries, I don't know. Maybe it's a bit of everything. I, I shouldn't have said attitude, but... It worries me that he's told the Dragons no because you should at least hear them out. Maybe they've got all these plans. It says to me he wants to go and win a premiership for Penrith. It's Penrith or the Titans. The Titans' best chance is, hey, his partner is up there. He is set up. The whole game plan is revolving around him, whereas if Penrith goes to Penrith, he's going to have to fit in their system. You know, I think they'll change their game to play with him as much as possible. They'll shift Liam Martin into the middle, which I think is... Uh, going to cover Fisher Harris. There's your straight swap. I just it comes down to whether he wants money and lifestyle, or he wants to go to Penrith and win premierships. Because the Titans, with the greatest respect, and I'm a, you know, I got a soft spot for the, the poor old Titans. They're not coming close to a premiership in the next five years. The Panthers might have five more. It, it seems like the easiest decision in the world, except when you look at okay, he goes down there, he's just another player. At the Gold Coast, with Tino out, he is the club right now. Now, I would make an argument that AJ Brimson is probably more important than Fafita, but if they lose Fafita, it's going to look terrible on the optics. 
I think the Titans should be saying, go to Penrith, <coughs> because that frees up a million dollars and they can they can go to Ben Hunt and say, look, you want to come here? We've got a million. Would you even be going to Ben to Hunt now, though? Look how bad he's playing. I think they need to because there's not many options and he's a year or two away from retirement. <coughs> but Zach Lomax forced his way out. There's Flanagan's shown that he'll do it. I, re- I reckon they I reckon they push him to Penrith. I think he signs for him on Friday morning. And I think Ben Hunt is linked with the Titans quick smart. Yeah, I um it, it's a frightening world where you're thinking that Penrith can keep producing all this talent and still go and get a guy like Fafita. And it's you know, it's really interesting to read people's take and perception and, and it's one of the reasons why I hope that he goes to Penrith over the Roosters because Let's face it, the Roosters go and buy all the players that they want. I'm very surprised that Zach Lomax didn't go there, by the way. Um, but, you know, they, they've just they've got this farm of juniors. Like They didn't care that Taruva's going because they've got Casey and Jesse McLean tearing up the New South Wales Cup. They didn't care that Stephen Crichton left because they've got Talamay coming back. And they've got Isaac Tungo, and they, they signed those guys on cheaper deals. They signed Isaac Tungo and Talamay for the price that the Bulldogs paid for Stephen Crichton. You know? On the wing, they're, they're about to lose Sania Taruva. That's okay. We've got the Casey brothers, and if we need to babysit them for a year, we've got Paul Alamodi. Yeah. yeah? We're losing Jerome Luai. Oh, no, they've got Jack Cole in reserve grade. They seem to just go and find... They've got Brad Schneider. They seem to just go and find all these players who just need one-year deals to go and partner Nathan Cleary, and they'll go and do it again until the next junior is ready. Um... I think that, I think there's three players at Penrith that they would fight, fight tooth and nail to keep, and that'd be Dylan Edwards, Nathan Cleary, and Isaiah. And I think the rest of them outside of that, they you know like James Fisher Harris is going, and they they didn't go out on the market to get the next big prop. It wouldn't surprise me if they picked up someone like a Royce Hunt um, or an Oregon Kafusi to just kind of fill that that void there. Um, but man, if they get Dave Fafita, holy hell, they are just. Just when you think that Penrith might come back back down, they're just going to go back straight back up. Well run club, which brings me to my next point. Ivan Cleary's in the media saying that, uh, well, he's sick of losing players that Penrith produced to other teams and wants some compensation. Now, I've seen a lot of feedback on this all negative because, let's face it, it's, it's a statement that is crazy. It's ridiculous and it's just outright outlandish. But it's got a point. Half the Bulldogs side is, is Penrith Juniors or Penrith come through the Penrith system at some point. Uh, half the West Tigers, when they add a couple more next year, it's there's a fair few Penrith players. But if you look through, there's just as many Cronulla players that have played at Cronulla and gone elsewhere. Sorensen being one and Kate Wall won a premiership with them too. So what's good for the goose? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, the whole, the whole thing though is like when you become a premiership team, you get pillaged. Hmm. That's just... It's as simple as that. You will get pillaged. Um, the The only reason why it looks so poor for Penrith and why Penrith are crying poor is because there's so many players and it's, and it's because these players that come through the juniors and they take the rookie scale deals and they break into first grade on the second year of a four-year deal and they're not being paid and they might get a little upgrade here or there or a bonus here or there. But when they hit the open market, these clubs can turn around and go, we need a centre. He's paid 200 grand. We can we can pay him X amount of dollars. And I get it. It's a salary cap league, right? And there's it's not like the NBA where there's hard caps and soft caps and luxury taxes and marquee money and all this kind of stuff. It's a straight up, here's your salary cap. Here's how much you can spend. It's on the players to go and get third party deals to keep themselves happy here. You can't have anything to do with it. That's why it looks so bad for Penrith. Ivan Cleary wants compensation. Brother, you've got three NRL Premiership rings. You're going to have another three before the decade closes. Good problem to have. I, I just, again, though, you look and they, you know, kick out was a Cowboys junior. Yep. And he had a huge part to play. So uh, that's just one player, I know. But, like, come on, Ivan. It just, it just seems that Penrith need to be behind the eight ball in their own minds to get that kick. Or I say they're not happy unless they're unhappy. Like, they need that that victim mentality. 
which is hard to get when you're defending back to back to back premiers. So I think he's creating a us against the world thing. Like, look what they're doing, boys. Let's go get them. And their Penrith players are like, yeah, you're right. Even though he's not right in any way, shape, or form. I, I think it's just a, it's just a tactic. He was probably bored. He's probably like, look, we need we get, we've got Origin coming up. We're gonna lose eleven players. Let's stir him up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's harmless. I but you said it, mate. You want compensation? Well, you got three trophies. There's your compensation. On to a player who, by all rights, was out the door. Uh, supposedly had signed a deal with Rugby Union last year before Rugby Australia said, hey, you know what, we'll pull out. And that's Angus Crichton, who now arguably is the form back row of the competition over the past month or so. Uh, talks are that the Roosters have gone, hey, hang on a minute, maybe we can find that money, being that there's about $7 million in cap space available. Angus Crichton should just sit back and say, well, one second, because I guarantee you about 10 clubs right now who didn't want to have a bar of him a couple of months ago and now looking at him because if you look at the off-contract players in all positions, with the greatest respect, it's not great. A lot of teams, a lot of money, and I think Angus Crichton's going to catch in big time. The thing that surprised me so much about Angus Crichton is he's only 28 years old. Mm-hmm. Right? He's only 28 years old. I thought he was like pushing 30, 31. Angus Crichton's in a great position now where he just sits back and waits for David Fafita to make a decision. And the best decision that David Fafita can make for Angus Crichton would be to stay at the Titans. Because then Angus Crichton can turn around and go, hang on a minute, Penrith's got a load of cash. The Roosters have got a load of cash. These two teams are going to be fighting for premierships and I'm going to be a big part of that. Who wants to pay me the most money? Then the other thing is, Angus Crichton, say David Fafita goes to the Roosters and the Roosters all of a sudden don't have the money for Crichton, he's in a position to then turn around and go, well, Penrith or the Titans have money. Mm-hmm. He can then also turn around and go, St. George have money. The Canberra Raiders have money. So I think he just sits back and, and waits. Um, yeah, in terms of form, he's like, he's really, really turned it back. And Six weeks ago, he was playing for the North Sydney Bears. Three weeks' time, he's going to be playing for the New South Wales Blues in a run-on team. Yeah, he was, just to correct, he's playing for the Roosters. They're the Melbourne Oh, the Roosters, yeah. Now. But you're exactly right, and he ran out for the Bears last year. And this is a bloke who didn't get drafted in our fantasy league, which says something because he was always in the top few. There was a fight for him the other week when he became available and started playing well. I think that's going to mirror what we're going to see at NRL level because this guy is so talented. He had a real bad year last year because of obvious reasons I don't want to go into now, but those distractions or whatever you want to call them are gone. And he's come in, and I guarantee you rugby, New South Wales, or whatever you call that other ridiculous game, are thinking, oh, no, because they could have had him in a World Cup cycle, a home World Cup cycle, and they tore, they pulled away from a contract next year. If they come back, Angus Crichton's going to say, get out of here. And go sign a massive deal elsewhere. Oh, good on him. I love. Mm. I love this. This is a great redemption story. He's a fantastic player. He's one of my favourites to watch. Certainly, mm-hmm. he's playing Cronulla in a couple of weeks. But uh, good on Angus Crichton. Oh, yeah. he's you cash in big time. Yeah, yeah. Look, Crichton. If you need some, uh, if you need some help with this situation, just reach out to Dan and I, uh, Terry Mortimer at zerotackle.com.au you know, forward slash Dan is ugly, and we will uh, we'll more than happy help you out here. Give you the right advice. Uh, I'll only take four fifths of the commission as well, whatever. Done. From a feel good story to a uh, story. Tavita Pangai Jr. has given up on his very promising boxing career that lasted. Who saw like, that coming? Fights. Last year, he retired from the game rugby league, walked out on a ridiculous contract, and the Bulldogs said, see ya, because he was playing like absolute, well, not very well. Despite playing Origin, which. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank my head on uh, Brad Fittler last year. Looks like he's coming back to the game that he left, what, six months ago and retired from and said, no more, I'm going to boxing. He's been linked with Melbourne. The, probably the only coach in the world that could get anything out of Tavita Pangai Jr. is Craig Bellamy. Three-parter here, Terry, or two-parter? We'll see where it goes. One, what do you think of him going to Melbourne? Two, do you think he can come back? And three... Do you think that this would be allowed if he was playing well last year or would the Bulldogs be kicking up an almighty stink? I'm going to, I'm going to throw a fourth part in here because he's 28 as well. And that, again, surprises me. What's even more surprising is that he's born on the 4th of 
February and Angus Crichton is born on the 5th of February. And that's just thrown me out because I thought both of them were older than they were. And they're a day apart at 28 years old. Um, the first point, I'm not surprised that he has thrown a boxing career out the window. I think he just did whatever he could to get out of the Bulldogs, right? The second thing, going to Melbourne, I actually don't think that's the best option for him right now. I know that I know that Craig Bellamy is seen as this super coach. I know that that's the, the, the opportunity to go down there. Melbourne don't have a good forward pack right now. That's not the move I'd be making if I was Tavita Pangai Jr. And you, to your third point, would the Bulldogs be... The Bulldogs couldn't wait to get him out the door. Had he warranted New South Wales form and selection, had he played all three games, and had he led the dogs from the front and you know got them out of the bottom four or whatever, and then said, I want to retire, they probably the dogs probably would have kicked up a stink and said, you know what, we're going to keep the deeds to your contract for the next couple of years... And if you want to go and play NRL again, you have to give us the first right of refusal and you need to sign at market value. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that they both agreed to break the contract. He got got himself a little bit of a payout. He can now go and sign what clubs feel are market value for him. I just, again, I don't think Melbourne is the right move for him. Where would we? I I can't, I can't, you can't start and he's probably going to sit. Do you want to know, if I'm Tavita Pangai Jr., do you want to know the first phone call I'm making? Ivan Cleary. We got the best I would have been a premiership player with you, Ivan. I made a terrible mistake going to the Bulldogs. It hasn't worked out. I'm willing to take less money. I know you've got it now. Do you want Liam Henry on your, on your bench or do you want Tavita Pangai Jr.? Go to Penrith. Go back there. Turn your career around. I, I don't hate that call, to be honest. I just think... If they, if they got him and Dave Fafita, that is like just absolute so, bullshit. He, his stock has fallen so far. Because at one point, I had him on level with your Tinos and your Payne Yes, yep. That was the level. It was those three were the next three stars. Two have kicked on. Pango Jr., I know he played Origin, but... Ugh, again, didn't deserve like, it. He didn't deserve it at all. He and deserved that Origin spot as much as as, as a Saifidi did. Yeah, look, completely oh, shot at the Saifidis. I like it. But I just... Good on him for coming back. I'm trying to stay positive. I I think a lot of these blokes, these football players, go and box, and you can't play boxing. He was 27 when he retired, and you go and start. Now, I know he had a fight against Box Cart, us, and he's a great athlete. He's very powerful, but he's not tall enough. He's not big enough. He's not powerful enough, and he's got 10 years less experience than these other blokes. He would have gone in and trained with a Justice Hooney or a you know, a million, or, or even some of these younger boxers have been doing a couple of years and gone, oh, geez. And he doesn't have the name of a Paul Gallon to go headline pay per views. He would have had to scrap for three or four years. And I don't blame him for saying, no, this probably isn't for me. I'm not sure that even happened. Maybe he just never lost the love for rugby league. Maybe he just saw greener grass and getting out of the Bulldogs and said, whatever happens, happens. I think it's more the latter than anything else. Or I just feel that if a player retires, if he was playing well, the Bulldogs would be saying, oi, no chance. Last year, they were like, all right, see ya, and he could sign for the Storm tomorrow, and the Bulldogs aren't going to say anything. It bothers me. This is a loophole that needs to be closed right now. If you retire, you're done for two years. Just go and this. you got to... If you Unless want to, you go back to the club that you retired from. Yeah, yeah. Of course, there's, there's reasons. You know, we've seen players come back. You know, Tom Brady did it famously in the NFL, but... Tomorrow Martin did it. It's just... There's got to be something, and I think the fact that circumstances are the way they are, it's going to work out all right. I would be shocked if he doesn't sign for Melbourne. I think he'd be in first grade by the end of the year. Next year, though, he could be quite a player. It's fun. It's fun. Speaking of fun, I saw a brilliant, brilliant suggestion thrown up by James Graham, who's very quickly becoming my favourite pundit in rugby league, other than yourself, of course, Terry. He knows his football. He's come out and said that last week's bunker was... Unforgivable, I agree. We've been on that for a long time. And he suggested that there's a three-person bunker. They don't speak to each other. They all put their opinions in, and it's two to one or hopefully three to nil. Should be three to nil just quietly. Before I throw to you, I want to... This is a left-field option I just want to float. I want these people to referee to the rules. One, three, five, or 25. Referee to the rules, because we're not seeing that the last few weeks. Do you think a three-person bunker is a is a potential fix? Okay, here's here's the thing, and, and this is I heard that story, and do you know what my immediate thought was? 
the three-person bunker or VAR in the Premier League. And look how terrible that is. You had the VAR deny Liverpool a goal when they were five metres onside because they didn't communicate to the referee properly. Now, I know it's different. I know it's different in, in soccer and, you know, when it stops start and we award a try or we don't award a try or, you know, there's a captain's challenge and the game is actually paused. But too many cooks spoil the broth, right? So you're going to have a senior official in there. And so this is how the VAR in England is. You've got a senior official, you've got a senior VAR, you've got the assistant VAR, and you've got the apprentice referee, right? And all three of them have an earpiece. And just say for one instance that the apprentice and the assistant VAR over to want to go against the senior official. Mm-hmm. What's to stop him turning around to the referee and going, I'm the senior official, you listen to me. Can they all hear each other though? They can. They're in the room with each other. So I don't Williams think that we've got I don't think we've got the capability to have three people sitting in a room next to each other and going to the referee. This is a try. This is a try. Whatever. Like that. That process is going to take too long because you and I could probably look at a decision within fifteen seconds and go, "That's right." But these guys want to get technical and they want to they they want to do whatever they can. And that's just going to take so long. So you need them in the room together. But I think you got to do it like the Super League. If, if you're gonna do, you got to do it like the Super League. There's a ninety second shot clock, and if you haven't come up with a decision, you just go back and back the guy on the field. There is no fix for this there's no perfect fix it's just about improving again we saw the most hip drop of all hip drop tackles not lead to a sin bin and then Graham Anderson came out and said oh it's not a hip drop and everyone was like okay why is he suspended oh it's a dangerous tackle why is it a dangerous it's a hip tackle? drop because it's a hip drop we've got the head of the, the referees or whatever he is he doesn't know what he's talking about he can't get the rules right we have blokes saying hey we can't give a penalty try in this instance and Anderson come out and say well, that's not a rule. We've got referees making decisions, getting overturned one after the other after the other. It just... It, there's no fix for this. Again, the only way we're going to get consistency in the bunker is if one person does a round of games every single week. Why that hasn't been suggested yet, I'll never know. It must be in their contracts that they can't. Mm-hmm. I would. That, there's no easy fix here. You know, you get three independent people. Get three, like the, the three person rule is a great shout because that will create divide and you're not going on one person's opinion. And this is the thing that shits me. Like when you get Gerard Sutton in the video referee box and he says, in my opinion, I don't want it to be your opinion. I want it to be a, a matter of fact. Tell me how you got to this decision. Don't give me your opinion on it. Tell me how you got to this decision. So a three person independent, as long as those three people are doing the same game, uh, are, are, are doing all the games, right? Mm-hmm. Now, what about sick leave? What about this? What about that? <laughs> Brother, you got to work 30 weeks in the year. Mm-hmm. That's it. Round one to 27, four weeks of finals. Sorry, 31 weeks in the year. That's what you got to do. What happens if I'm sick? Wear a mask. Go to work, right? Go to work. Dial in on teams if you have to. Mm-hmm. That's your job. I want the same three people to do it. Or I want the same person to do every game. But, you know, that way it's not just a heads or tails or it's in my opinion, you know, you've got two on one. Mate, you and I can both see this, but Gerard Sutton can't. Well, he's an Let's not listen to him. We're going with Terry and Dan. We've just solved it. Yeah, I, I want to add a left field suggestion here. Three, three tier, I love that. Uh, one is a bunker official. Two mm-hmm. is you and me alternating. And three mm-hmm. is a Twitter poll because we'll get better than what we're getting at the moment. That's so frustrating. Let, let's talk some positivity, mate. The dogs and the tigers, both on rebuilds. Earlier in the year, I said publicly that I think the West Tigers are ahead on the rebuild. I want to apologise right now because that was one of the stupidest things I've ever said and there's plenty of competition. Who do you have further along, the Bulldogs or the Tigers? Right. I've had this same debate with West Tigers fans online for years. Mm -hmm. And I've asked, why do you think you're ahead of the Bulldogs? Oh, we've got heaps of members. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does that do for you on the field? Oh, well, our Harold Matthews team beat the Sharks. Okay. How many of those Harold Matthews guys playing first grade at the moment? 
Oh, our New South Wales Cup team's been pretty good, so is our flag team. How many of them going in there? And if those guys are so good, why are you going to your biggest rivals down the road and pinching all their players? Mm-hmm. The reason is that club doesn't know what it's doing. And they're a long way of getting out. And I've said it. I had the three projects. If I was a coach and I was looking at the three projects of the Bulldogs, the Knights, and the Tigers, I'd be taking the Bulldogs first, I'd be taking the Knights second, I'd be taking the Tigers. Never. Mm-hmm. Right? The Dogs are always going to be in a position to get themselves out of it one way or another, whereas the Tigers, it's like that Simpsons episode where they just keep digging down. They keep digging down and they keep digging down and they get further and further and further away. And I know they're not last right now, but in six weeks' time, if you told me the Tigers are bottom of the competition, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. I absolutely would take the Dogs project over the Tigers project 10 times out of 10 if you offered it to me 10 times out of 10. I don't care about your memberships. I don't care about your fancy centre out at Concord, which is built on a rugby union field. I just might add, your centre of excellence is a rugby union field. Okay? The Zurich Centre of Excellence for the West Tigers is used for rugby union. Let's just get that out there. I don't care about a Centre of Excellence. It's a glorified gym with an office. I don't care about it. I don't care about your memberships because your members don't know what you're talking about either because you think you're better than the Bulldogs. You're not. Get back in your box. Completely fair. Uh, I want to offer up an alternative. No. The, the Tigers have their spine for the future. They got Buller, they got Luai, they got Galvin, and they got Apicosa. Yeah, but then what are you going to do about the young Latu kid? Well, that's the thing. I, right now, I think the dog's side is far better. And I think that the next three years are going to be the dogs are going to be the better team. Because Cam Serrato for the grief he cop in the last year and a bit. Seems to be a very, very good coach. Benji's completely untested. But more importantly, you've got a bloke named Gus Gould who, you know, everyone can laugh and make all the jokes and the plurals and the singulars, etc., etc. This guy knows his football. Meanwhile, the Tigers had their former chairman blast the club and pull a million dollar a year sponsorship away because his feelings were hurt. It's a different level of seriousness at the moment. I think the Tigers have made some right decisions. They've got a great bloke in Richardson in charge now. I think Barry O'Farrell knows his stuff. And he's hooked up everywhere, right? Especially with getting a bottle of the wine. And I made that joke and Barry actually followed me and liked that tweet. So big respect to him. I like where the Tigers are going. I think they're in the right direction. But they are so far behind the Bulldogs. I didn't see it. I was too busy making fun of all the utilities the Bulldogs sign. But mm-hmm. for all the utilities, they've signed. They've got these young forwards coming through. And Bronson Zeri's come back. An absolute whip it as I thought he might. So they've got a heaps better short term future, although I am a bit more positive on the Tigers than you are. I, I'm, 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 I would say ahead of both of them right now. I know you're saying about the 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 spine for the future for the Tigers. But let me offer you up. You're Reed Marnie. Okay, now would be would be playing Origin if if Harry Grant wasn't in the team. Mm-hmm. Would be in the team. Uh, you're Matt Burton. So Reed Marnie's 26. You've got Matt Burton who's 24. Yep. I know this name is, you know, it's not a popular name amongst me or you, right? But Connor Tracy at fullback for the Dogs this year is putting up better numbers. And I'm just, I've just brought the stats up now. He's putting up better numbers than Dream Buller. Yep. The only thing that the Dogs don't have is a halfback. Mm-hmm. And we all know that the Dogs with Gus Gould can shift money around for a halfback. The other thing that the dogs have is a promising young junior who's tearing up the New South Wales Cup named Joe Ash Papali'i, and he's a fullback. Yep. So they may have their fullback for the future. There's nothing stopping the dogs going out and getting the next big thing, number seven. Mm-hmm. Give me the dogs project any any day of the week. Give me the dogs project. Completely fair. I think I'll take the dogs over the Knights as well. I do like where the Tigers are heading, but I don't Same, know. Same, because they're heading there. nowhere. Where are they heading? Nowhere. Don't think they're heading there fast enough. Uh, and finally, a bit of nerdy nerd, but not from us. From someone we're very, well, we know quite well. That, that's Shane Flanagan, who seems to have been 110% correct on Zach Lomax. 
to the point where I'm now seeing Parramatta fans saying they've signed him as a fullback rather than a centre. And I've even said, seen some people come out and say, well, obviously he's going to replace Mike Acevo on the wing. As if he didn't leave the Dragons purely and 100% on the fact that they said, you can't play centre, you're a winger. He was in origin contention three weeks ago, and I would say the form player of the competition. Since he's gone back to the centres, he got absolutely bollocks by a rookie in Kale Last week, well, they got a flog, so let's not look too much into that. He's a bog average centre. He's a superstar winger, which is exactly almost word for word what Shane Flanagan said. Nerny ner, he told you so. Yeah, being being uh, in the ET stand at the game um, on the weekend, any time the, the 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 game plan was to take the ball down Zach Lomax and Michaeli Ravalawa's side as much as they could, and then put crossfield kicks up to Sione Katoa because you don't want to get a one on one contest with Ronaldo and Ravalawa because Ronaldo is just going to eat him up on that. But anytime they put a bomb up, Zach Lomax was running across, right? Which screams winger. Mm-hmm. He's going to compete for a bomb. That's what he does. He's not, he's like, just watching him take the second hit up, not the first hit up on a kick return, because his kick returns are absolutely magic. But just watching him take the second hit up, like, it just, it just didn't feel genuine. It didn't feel authentic. And had he stayed on the wing for this whole time, him and Brian Toto were locks mm-hmm. for the wing spot. It's cost him an, his his ego and his attitude has cost him an origin spot this year. And I, like you may say injuries or whatever, but you can't tell me that it would be more detrimental to the team putting in one of the Fangai brothers in the centres and keeping Lomax out on the wing. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me that. No, I I think Flanagan's absolutely nailed it. I, I was shocked because I thought. I thought Lomax was going to play fullback this year and Sloan was going to be moved on. And Flanagan, who's got a few more games coaching experience than we do, came out and said what he said. And Lomax took it to heart and he should have taken it to heart. This is a bloke who's been told he's going to play Origin and Centre since he was a, you know, in New South Wales Cup or, or just in the first grade. His ego got hurt. And I don't blame the kid. I'm not playing at all. There's more money playing in the centres. There's more money playing at fullback. You know, Parramatta, of, he's forced his way out because he couldn't get a centre spot. He's, you know, he hasn't said that, but it was, well, it was said. Parramatta signed him because they got no centers, or they got Penasini who's okay. He's going to go play center. There's no way they're going to. He's going to rock up there, and they're going to go. Actually, you're going to go on the wing. You know what he's going to do? He's going to say, "Well, I'm going back to market. See you later." And they're not going to be able to stop him because you just can't in this day and age. If he'd stayed on the wing, he's hundred percent playing Origin. I don't think it's even close. Ado Car's not playing anywhere near the lights out football that Lomax was up until two weeks ago when we went back to the centers. He's absolutely. It's cost himself 150 grand right there, or whatever match payments are times three. It's it's not going to matter. Ultimately, if he's a long term center, he's a long term center. I completely get it. Maybe we'll play Origin there, but right now, I think Flanagan's just got to say to players in his squad and elsewhere, he goes, "I know what I'm doing. Let me build this side." It makes him look good. Obviously, he wants Lomax playing his best football wherever he names him, but. Uh, Good on Flanagan and forget one right. And Zach, if you're watching, mate, go back to the wing because I want you playing there for Origin. You were playing some real good football. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Knock On Podcast brought to you by the good people at Zero Tackle, your one-stop shop for everything rugby league. They've got news. They've got stories. They have breaking news. They have all the up-to-date player movements and contracts. They have some of the best independent riders there is in rugby league. And, of course, they have the best. Mr. Dan Nichols. Dan, what have you got coming for us this week and what can we expect on Zero Tackle? Got some, uh, some big origin. Obviously, it's origin time, so that's going to dominate the headlines. Queensland's high pits itself. I've done all I can. I have just I cannot dissect. I cannot find other than a big injury. Maybe I'll do something who replaces Tino to start, but it's going to be Flagler if he's fit. So there's that. New South Wales, though, have probably four players that can walk up today and get their jersey put on. So... We're going to see the centres. The centre of attention is going to drop tomorrow. I've dropped some big names, uh, some popular names and some some left left field names because I think Michael Maguire is going to look outside the box because what we've seen last few year, years hasn't ha- uh, hasn't worked. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and the power rankings are going on. Have have the Storm done enough in, in victory to hold on to number one? Or will... Uh, yeah, they're number one because I named them number one weeks and weeks and weeks ago and... 
I don't like moving teams down if they don't lose. So uh, we may see. Hey, this week Cronulla can set a huge cat amongst the pigeons and do me a favour and mix it up. But uh, yeah. I will offer my power rankings to you in the form of the ladder. That's your power rankings. Well, Anything yeah. outside of that is wrong. Yeah, but I would argue, Terry, that Cronulla have had an easier draw than Melbourne, and Melbourne have won the same amount of games. We pushed them above. But head to head also counts. So stay tuned. That'll be fun. And there's some other things too. Scotty and I got a good uh, good thing going at the moment. Scott was going to be here tonight, but he heard you were going to host and said, no. I host every week, so if that keeps Scott away, I'll be here. And on that note, 